Hello ladies and gents, I am Anadiffin, and welcome back to Aurora Forex. In this episode, I am going to try and not run over as much. And also, I am going to go over just a few little things. So, I am open to have any, pretty much anything renamed. And so, I have already renamed the shipyard, the Unimate shipyards, as per suggestion in the comment section. Anything else can also be renamed as well. Uh, speaking of, I have a few ship designs here which do need renaming. So I currently have the Argentina PDC, the Braswell Jump Scout, well currently or Jump Destroyer, the Cornwallis Destroyer Leader. This may not come to pass. I, I might change my mind as to if I have a Destroyer Leader or not. That might be covered by the Jump Scout. I'll see when I actually finish building it. The Discovery Geo Survey Ship, the Napoleon Grav Survey Ship, the Nelson Construction Ship, that is for constructing jump gates on the actual jump points, and they've got the Oregon Colony Ship, which could do with a rename, the Outreach Freighter, and the Queensland Destroyer. This is going to be our primary destroyer, uh, 8 500 tons. And then also have the Rodney Destroyer Escort that's going to be carrying the anti-missile missiles. So those are the ships we have for the moment. And yeah, they could do with a good rename, I think. In terms of my empire, one thing I do need to do, I have a massive shortage of funds. So I'm going to stop construction of all these factories. So I'll just modify this. I'll just modify it to one. So rather than keep on building and building and building, We'll just finish building up that and that should get me to 970. And do I have anything else in note here? No, no maximum there. Do you have some infrastructure that so I can put it on to somewhere when possible? Otherwise, though, I think it's just auto turn. Ha! Construction factory is completed, as per expected, really. And also, research completed on the military drive engine. That is a very good. So you can actually design the ships straight away, which is nice. Don't think there's any other research. I'll just double check that um, at the MM fire control. So you need to wait for that to finish. So another 10,000 tonnes of capacity has been added to the Unimate shipyards on Tunny. That is currently 55,000. How much do I require for the currently the Nelson? 65,000. So another 10,000 needs to be added on immediately. So go to the shipyards and here and add another 10,000 for the class. That's activity. So that'll be completed relatively quickly actually. As it does get larger, it does actually produce quicker, which is a nice little feature. There we go. The backup backup sensors are being done and commencing. So work on the next ones. There we go. Fire control is now work on. The backup sensor is done. Ooh, look at all that. EM sensor has commenced. So far, control is done. So that does mean that I should be able to produce the Queensland. Let's go to design view. I need to add on the military drive. There it is. The engine dri drive. So you can see here, the military drive is considerably more powerful than the others, considering as well it's an ion drive rather than just nuclear pulse. Let's grab that on. It's also a lot more expensive. You can see 217 Galasite compared to 18. On the plus side, it makes it very, very quick. So since this is a main destroyer, I want to have at least a couple of layers of armor. Uh, I don't think it needs to go too high. That does add a lot of extra mass to the vessel. Do need to know, add a couple of magazines to this ship. It does have the new armor, so the composite armor is on there. And it, 
since the main destroyer, I need to have a missile controller on. And in fact, I would quite like to have two. The reason for having multiple fire controls is twofold. One is redundancies, should one get destroyed. Secondly, I want to be able to target multiple things. And when you shoot, try to shoot missiles down using anti-missile missiles or actual cannons, you target a salvo of missiles, not individual ones. So the more salvos you can send out, you can overwhelm point defense more easily. If you send a single salvo of, say, 120 missiles, that is easier to shoot down compared to two salvos of 60. But those numbers are a little bit excessive, but probably 12 and 6, 6 rather than 120 and 60. Still, because of the way you aim at them, lots of smaller salvos are better. Speaking of missile launchers, I need to add a couple of those on. They are quite heavy. I think if I add six on there, that is probably okay. Unfortunately, annual failure rate is now considerably high. So let's add some engineering spaces on. So eight engineering spaces. If I just had five on, how is that? That's okay want a backup ship sensor as well. So this sensor will it gives me the range for the same fire control, which is very important really. So there's a... I actually can't... I need to put the range on this. Oh, it shows the range there. Awesome. So I should probably put it in the name, but it is here on the information there and here. So this can see out to here. And the missile launchers have a higher resolution, but I can see ships at a decent distance, even with the, a backup sensor. I will have another ship seeing longer distance, hence the destroyer leader, which will be able to see a very long distance and pick targets out for this ship to get in close. But because they have a much larger sensor, they will be very visible to the enemy and be a bigger target. So by having smaller sensors, if the main target is taken out, I don't just have a huge lump of metal just floating in space, unable to defend itself. The range is a little bit short. I think I will get rid of the fuel storage and put a large fuel storage on instead. Um, oh, damn it, you got research large fuel storage. There you go. Well, the large fuel storage is two. D500, so D5000, who I will add on just those fuel storages. In fact, I might research the larger fuel storage. That's uh, kind of useful. I think it must, must be in the logistics then. Yeah, there it is. Have I got a scientist? No, I do not. So move uh, a couple of research labs there. And then just put a pilot person on there and create that. Because I would quite like the large fuel storage. So let's just spin the time around a little bit longer. Oh, excellent. Ceramic composite armor. This is very useful. So, this is a very useful test to show you how it makes an effect. So if we go to, back to the Queensland. We currently have composite armor, so let's add on five layers. So eight 100 tons, and it's currently composite armor. If I go to new armor, this will update the armor to the ceramic composite. See how the tonnage changes. It's three, almost 300 tons, and there's a lot less armor there, because it is a lot thinner. This is going to be very useful, and it means I can essentially get another layer of armor onto my ship or very, very nearly, which will definitely help. And that will affect all my ships, including the civilian fleet. It'll make the civilians a little bit lighter. So I can't actually adjust that because this is a vessel in use. But I can apply it to the Nelson, which I haven't built yet. So if I go to the new armor on it, it does decrease it by a couple of hundred tons. Not anything massively special, but definitely helps. Speaking of, I'm going to have a look to see if I can make a better engine than that, because I think this commercial engine isn't as good as it could be, because I can make an ion one. 
180 and I think I will do this because this is commercial ion drive and that will actually be faster and more efficient than what I'm currently utilizing. So I will create that design and go research that. Yep, ion drive has been completed there. In fact, let's have a look at how that will affect the Nelson. So currently, I have five of the 120 pulse engines. You can see I have a range of 40 billion kilometers. This is a more powerful engine, so the speed will go up, but also it should be more efficient. Oh no, it is actually the same efficiency. I thought I had a slightly more efficient engine by now, but maybe not. Maybe I'm thinking of the nuclear. Yes, it's more, more efficient than the nuclear therm, or not the nuclear pulse. Okay, that's, that's fine. It's faster by quite quite a margin, actually. So it's now 400, 700 instead of the four, more 480, wasn't it? And it's lighter, that's all really good. And again, five fuel storage, that's going to be fixed with the additional fuel storage in a moment. Additional 10,000 10, stuff has been added. It's good. The thermal sensor has been started and the EM detection sensor has been completed. Fuel storage large has been finished. Excellent. Oh, one thing I also need to do. I need to create a survey team. So one thing I can do, because I I can, I can actually just do a geology team. I will say unassigned, because if I do assigned, that's the Commodore currently in the geo survey ship. So I'll go for unassigned, biology genetics, and do all of these guys create a geology team on this asteroid and you can actually disband and recreate as often as you like really and it means you can essentially instantly teleport them around and it's you can you know, transfer them from ship to ship but it's just a lot simpler to just move them within a system particularly if it's a populated system I might just do that as a little house rule so long as I actually have a colony in a system a colony with people on, such as, you know, the capital, I will allow it to transfer around without having to use transfer ship. So I create this team. The rating just means how quickly they will do it. If there are minerals, they have a chance to find them. It doesn't matter on that rating. It will just take them an absolute age, being only at 75. Still, 75... The storage has been done. That means additional research. Labs are free. Still no logistics ground combat. That's really irritating now. I've got no spare sensors and all that. To add on all the research labs onto Ellis Cross for the research rate. Go back to the designs. Don't need fuel store all those fuel storages, just put on a large. It's actually less crew, I believe, or less components. Annual failure rate 88%. Doesn't really make much of a difference. It is, however, cheaper. See, so it's only three times the cost where it has five times the capacity. And considering the shortages I have, that is something I need to be worried about. What other things do I require on this? So I've been playing around with various sizes at the moment. I'm really not too sure if I want to go for eight missile launchers or six, but then have additional magazine capacity. Because if you have additional magazine, I could actually armor this up a load more. Have like additional armor, or I could have a couple of more missile launchers and something like that. I think when it's important, I will reduce it down, down to the six for the moment, keep it this slightly smaller size while I figure out the other parts of my fleet. So, the, for example, the Destroyer Escort. It's going to have a very similar sort of design, actually. But it's going to have the 
anti-missile system. And so for this, I want a fire control from those and then quite a few of these missile launchers. So do something like that, have lots of little missiles, maybe even go further. So for quite a few anti-missile systems there, can fire six salvo, uh, three salvos each of six missiles gives a good range of capabilities and also probably actually very decent against little fighters. We need to add the military ion engine on and then the fuel storage as well. So a large fuel storage, add on a load of engineering spaces, so something like that, it's good. And already it's like, oh, what do I spend the extra stuff on? And that is a lot of ammo. This thing will rinse ammo like no one's business. So I want to ensure it has plenty on there for fighting with. Again, 8,000, put a little bit more on really. I'm not too sure what. It's something like, you know, big sensors and that. They'd be very nice, but I don't really need them on this on the primary ship, on the secondary ships. That's all going to fit on one ship. Still, this will have plenty of anti-missiles. Might even add another load on, so have very, very big magazines. And I can't quite fit that on. It has a so it has the backup sensor array. that is what well, pretty much all it requires. Maybe when I have the thermal sensor, I might add on one of those. Oh, also composite armor, new armor. It's very nice. So in fact, I could fit on the magazine. Yeah, fits in nicely. So the destroyer leader, I don't know if it's gonna use it. The Braswell though, this will have protection sensor and also the other sensor and probably actually be have a ton of point defense on it so this will be passive sensors all around and I do want to try and put some point defense on but for the moment keep going Ooh, Corundium has been exhausted on Bletchley A it's the asteroid keep going still more resources to mine out So no further geological deposits, so it's completed, it doesn't look like I found anything, okay, expand that team, move over to this place, put on geology team, unassigned only, create the team. The thermal sensor has been completed, good. I want you going on that one. The active search sensor, the biggest active search sensor. Do you want to put more labs for you, but you've only got, you can only operate five. Oh, 0.6 liters per engine hour has actually been improved. So the fact that I actually did additional research is now redundant. The thing, you know, you think you're doing okay and then suddenly, oh no, actually we made better engines. Kind of like that all the time. So, where do I want to go next? I think I should start working towards the next... Oops. <laughs> work towards the next engine tech. So, geo survey is complete. Completed survey. Doesn't look like... It's find any more stuff on that. It's a bit of a shame. Click on the next one, unassigned only. Go. Wait, it's already finished that survey? Wow. It's 
be absolutely minuscule per asteroid. Terraforming rates have been improved. Keep going. You'll be able to make some absolutely amazing terraformers for me. Ah, survey bonus all going up. That's cool. Galasite has been exhausted. It's just a year of depletion there. That's okay. Be able to then break up that colony. And then move all the stuff to the next one. Right, the research rate has improved. That's good. Gate shipyard operations make it cheaper for the retooling and that, which is kind of important since my resources. Excellent, the active search sensor has been completed. Now I can actually design the ships properly. So, Braswell, Jump Scout. You on the ion drive, want the large fuel storage, thermal and east EM sensor. I don't need two. Ah, how many multiples doesn't actually improve doesn't double it? Okay. Didn't realise that. Still quite short range, so jump scout. Uh, not much else I can really put on this guy. Want the missiles, then also need a load of engineering spaces. And the missile sensor, then do I actually want to put on some guns? Put on a load of actual rail guns. How fast does this move? About 3,000, okay. Gauss cannons, I can only have a Gauss cannon fire one, that is kind of rubbish. Oh! I have no railgun technology. Mizons then. Just make basic Mizons. Small Mizon cannon. Here's 600 of P there. I really want railguns though. So they're a little. They'll actually be able to shoot stuff down because it shoots a lot of things at once. Just sinking. But what I want to put on this guy. I'll put the large search sensor, the large active search sensor on the jump scout. So that will be able to see a good long range away. I think it would be better for this to have the anti missile system, some additional anti missile systems on this, but. I do believe that just having this will be very good. I have the backup sensors anyway. It's just putting the jump engine on your main, well, your jump engine on the thing which has the big search sensor is not a good idea. I just don't want to be tooling for multiple ships. I don't want to be doing for leader and the scout. We'll go to the Rodney now. We've got the Queensland. And that, so it's how I want to organize the munitions in these guys. I think two more missile launchers so I can launch a concerted barrage at my target. Um, can't really have the armor rating up though. Um, what else can I really put in here? Just put another couple of those. Engineering in there. I don't think there's anything else which I'd want to put in. Obviously, armor is what I would ideally like to put on, but no, needs must and all that. And that's I think. Oh, that's one thing. Deployment time. Six is a little bit short. Kind of want it. To be tw I would like it to be at twelve months. Yeah, so reduce this down. Put that up to. Nine. I think it deployed for a whole year is ideal. Just 
just can't fit on that other one. So I think this is what we have to do. Um, get a tiny little bit more fuel on. I'm just getting in nice round numbers. Yeah, that will do. So that's the Queensland Destroyer. So got all this on, so it'll have seven size 8 missile launchers. I know that it's not even between the two launch controllers, but that I don't have to have everything even you know, by, by odd numbers, and that would actually make more sense against varying sizes of ship. So that makes sense. I'll have a backup sensor. I don't have any backup anti-missile systems, but I can't really afford that on such a small hull. You know. 8,500 tons is pretty tiny. This guy, this miss, missile hunting one. What want you to have? Put you also up to a higher deployment time. And that instantly increases your time. I do need to do that on the Braswell as well. And Braswell, got to that. Ah, just need to remove a layer of armor on the Braswell. Good. Inside the Rodney now. See, a small thermal sensor would make sense on this guy. I do have very small thermal sensors. Of just a backup one. Um, make more sense later, but for the moment, not needed. There we go. That actually has quite a lot of size 1 missile launchers. A very large capacity. And four fire controls, so I'll be able to target multiple missile barrages at once. And that is good. So any eligible classes... What well, escort is this way around, isn't it? Cornwallis. Cornwallis. Oh, the <laughs> eligible ships are the ones which have nothing on. Yeah. So the Braswell. No. Queensland and Rodney. None of them are able to be built from the same shipyard. Which is unfortunate, and um, because of that, I'm actually going to build a new shipyard. New spaceport. They're pretty expensive, but I'll have to build two. Two more spaceports. In the meantime, I am going to have you actually set activity, and you're going to retool for the actual, um, the Braswell, the jump ship. It's been days a little bit. Spaceport has been completed. Duranium on Tunny has been exhausted. Well, there we go, just down to Corundium now. For inactive research labs. I didn't see what research completed. Ooh, the box launcher. I can actually start trying to research. No internal reload, so that's for like fighters and things. That's quite a cool idea. Let's go for kinetic queue up rail guns now. <laughs> and that's you. <laughs> oh yes, let's have a look. Get rail guns, the things which we've been working on for a while. Hmm. Then I think I'll go to box launchers. Research on railguns have been completed. Duranium has been exhausted on the asteroid. Okay. So, I need to now set up a task to move these mines from asteroid 7 to moon 13. Let's go to the outreach to do that for me. 
there we go. I have ordered my ship to do all the moving and also refuel for a little bit of wastage, but whatever. Let's get going on that action. Ah, shipyard operation savings has been completed. Brilliant. That's construction production. Next, what do I want to actually improve? I think I'd create the Saurium Harvesters. If I haven't got them yet, it would definitely help. Stellarator Fusion Reactor has been done. That means can I work on the next research. Next engine type. So power propulsion. So matching scientists. Five. Brilliant. So that is the Magnetoplasma Drive technology. That would be a very nice thing to go for. It is expensive, but it's good. There we go. Railgun launch velocity has been completed. That means I can actually design some railguns. So if I actually went to railguns, we won't come up with an error anymore. So railgun can create a very basic little railgun. It won't shoot very far, but it can shoot very rapidly. It was shot four times, which does make it a decent system for just shooting down missiles. So in fact, I will just create that because this would be useful for point blank fire and it's, you know, pretty cheap. Fires, it, fires every five seconds, so it gives me a decent amount. So create that and I'll actually research it. it gives me a, a more options to put on my ships. So it's kinetic. Let's just add that on to the queue. Well, more Duranium has been exhausted and that is a good place to leave off. So, thank you very much for watching this episode of Aurora 4X with myself and Adifan. If you did enjoy the episode, please leave a like and or comment below as it is always great to hear from you lot. Otherwise, that's it for me for now and I shall see you next time. But until then, I'm out. Goodbye!